Damn. So, for those of you that come in a little later, I think this is what I'm I'm overdue for a casting video and a smelting video and some casting. I've got some freedom seeds to cast up. Oh, that was hard. So, I think that's what I'm going to do today. I think I need to um, take care of some other stuff first. So maybe in a couple couple hours, maybe, I need to probably re-up on my on my propane because the type of luck I have, I'll start casting and I'll run out of propane. So it's about time to re-up on it. So that's probably what I'll do. I've got a lot of um, stick-on soft lead to smelt. And I always have um, wheel weights to smell. So, plan on doing some. What's up, MCK? Plan on doing some some hollow point bullets, um, thirty eight Smith and Wesson. This mode, it's an NOE. That's a flat point, but I have the I have the RG four mode which it can do hollow points and deep hollow points shallow hollow points and the flat nose like that so i am trying to get my alloy mix correct so that i can produce those good little mushrooms it look like it's four of y'all here so that's what i'll do squatch hey brother kingpin what's going on uh, Squat said, hey, Chico, I seen you come on and want to say yo and give you a thumbs up. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, um, I am testing um, my signal and stuff like that because I was having some issues last night on the Georgia chat. Um, it kept bumping me off, and I contacted StreamYard, and I don't know what the issue is. So I'm, I'm probably going to um, – I do better when I record a video, but I might just go live and do my whole smelting and casting it'll it'll probably be long because if you guys know smelting and casting lead takes a long time so i'll probably do that but i'm overdue for doing some uh condensing a lot of my my alloy we got g23 jumped in and 67 railway hey brother so yeah um but like i said i'll <laughs> I need to go to the up here to the gas station and probably refill my propane or uh, exchange my propane because it'll be my luck. I'll start casting or smelting or smelting rather, and uh, I'll run out of propane. And that sucks. That's happened only one time to me. It's like it sucks to do that. So, but I'll probably do it maybe here in the next about probably two or three hours. But if I don't do it live, I'll probably do a video, but live is sometimes better. I may only go live after I've already got my pot up to temperature because that, that works pretty good sometimes. So, like I said, I'm kind of testing out this my my connection because last night I was getting bumped off left and right. Like, even in the after chat, I jumped in and it bumped me off. And so, I don't know. I'm waiting on stream. StreamYard hasn't got back to me yet, so... We will see. I hope everyone's having a good Saturday so far. I was going to go to the range, but Carter didn't want to go. But, you know, he don't make no rules. I am the parent, so we may go to the range later. Um, shoot shoot some 22. What does everyone else have on their agenda today? It's like it's six of y'all out there. So uh, yeah, Kingpin Squats, G23, 67 Rebel. MCK. G23 said, hey, y'all remember to have a 2A. Oh, we have a 2A rally today at 4 p.m. and 1 p.m. Okay. Let me put that up there. MCK, back to work. Yeah. Man, I was wore out yesterday. So normally on my Saturdays, I kind of sleep in, but I was like, I need to get some stuff condensed because behind the curtain here is buckets 
He said, what's going on, brother? A little work, a lot of range time. Yeah. G23, I'll definitely check it, uh, uh, tune in. You said you'll be uh, semi simulate casting on a rally on my channel. I'll definitely check it out, brother. I always uh, support my fellow 2A guys. And I think I was following you at the um, one rally you did. Well, not rally. Yeah, it was like a rally. Uh, it, but it was a lot of guys out there live streaming. I am, uh, you know what, one thing, my first time ever casting, I did live. It's when I first got into casting, and um, that was before they changed the rules. Like, you had to have a 1,000 subscribers to go live from a mobile device. So, if I do it today, I'll have to bring my laptop probably over to the to the door or put it outside and set it up so that I can cast and live stream at the same time. So yeah, I'll definitely check that out. So that's all I'm doing. I this thing it definitely won't go an hour or even 30 minutes like my last live stream. I was just kind of testing out my connection and stuff like that. And I'm sure my son is on the internet. So it it only seems to have issues when uh when I'm on like a uh live stream with more than one panel member. So the connection, it don't do it when I'm on here by myself, but I will check it out. My weekends go pretty quick, but um, yeah, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> cast up some 38, 357 hollow points. He said, he said, say he'll watch not stream. Kingpin said, stream y'all has a way you can go live without one, 1,000 subs or a few other streaming sites. Do You know what I did at one time? It was like share your screen, I think, or something like that. But yeah, I you know what? I was so used to doing the live streams. <clears throat> so what I used to do, like if I was on the way to the range, especially with some new reloads, I would go live and it was like, as reloaders, we when we, for me anyway, I can only speak for myself. When, when I test out a new load, I get nervous, sort of, you know, but I know I followed my, my uh, load data correctly, but still, before I pull that first shot, I'd be like, man, I hope everything goes correct. <laughs> so. But I used to live stream, but so it's just an inconvenience that when uh, YouTube took away that um, that uh, well, I don't want to say necessity, but that luxury, you know, if you had under one thousand uh, subs, you could do it. But they took that away. All right, MCK brother, we'll see you. Yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna stop right here at ten minutes because I was like I said, I was just checking. So that's what I'll do today. What else? Do I have anything else to do? I should do a a reloading video on this um, challenger press I have. And he say I do have that. Uh, I do have that UPC. Let Let me get you that UPC. Disappear behind the curtain, Nina. Oh, where you at? Let's see. I hope this helps. You could screenshot it. That's that UPC for that Lee Breach Lock Challenger press. That's a nice press. This is like my, that was like my second single stage. And the reason why I like that versus this one. And I like this one. I do I do a lot of my um, sizing on this one because of the, the, the openness of it. The Breach Lock doesn't have that. I mean, the Challenger does not have that. As you can probably see from the design, it's all, almost like a C press. But uh, the thing about the Challenger press, it comes with the um, it comes with your your priming option, N not an option. It comes with the priming kit. The this one does not. You've got to buy like the Ram Prime for it if you have this option and you want to, you know, you want to prime on this one. So the breach lock, I like it. I mean, the challenger, I keep saying breach lock. Breach lock is the system. Let, let me say that. Breach lock is the is the way the, the dies lock in. So it makes it a quick, kind of quick way to uh, add to your press. And I don't went 10 minutes already. But with 
with the breech lock system. If y'all can see those threads and the open slot, when I want to change the dies, it just it drops in there and it turns like a quarter turn and it's locked in there and it comes right out. So it makes changing dies very quick versus if it didn't have a breech lock, you've got threads, you got to screw them in, just screw them in, which that works too. It just, it's a convenience thing, uh, a quickness thing. So, but I'm going to let y'all go for stopping in. I appreciate everyone stopping in, all seven of y'all. Oh, G23 says, uh, what Dylan press would you suggest for a new reload? <laughs> okay. My, uh, my Dylan is a 650. And I'll, when I got in the reload, a lot of people were saying that was, that wasn't common for a new reloader to get a progressive press. But the reason why I did it, because I knew no, my reason why I was doing it, because I wanted volume. That's basically like on my Dylan, pretty much all I run is 9 millimeter 45. And I'll probably be doing 38, 357 on it when I get um, the conversion kit. Is it? Yeah, the conversion kit. So um, I think it's, no, is it conversion kit? It's something like that. I have to get the plate for it. Um, but the Dylan 650 is a nice press. Um, they do have the 750, which the priming option, uh, the priming system is set up like the 550 on the 750, and that may confuse you a little bit, G23, if I'm if I'm talking like that. So, um, so it is a learning curve. But I'll tell you what I did with my 650 when I first got it. I ran it just as a single stage. I did every operation one by one until I learned how the system worked, until I learned how to press work. Because um, it, it took a little while, not not that long, but, you know, um, it's all in the stroke of. Oh, so like on the on the 650, when I pull the handle down, it takes the ram up. And when you put let the handle go up, it comes to a stop. But. And so the whole time the the uh, the shell plate is turning in order to prime on the 650, you also have to push forward. If you don't do that, you won't get a primer in the case. And on the next time when you pull the handle down, the ram goes up, the shell plate turns, you're going to the next station, which is your powder drop. If you haven't, if you don't have a primer in your case and you drop powder, and it, it happens, trust me, you're going to have a case full of powder with no primer holding that powder in. So when it goes to the next station, you're going, you're going to be leaving a powder trail. And that happens when you're getting used to the um, the progressive style press. So I like the 650. A, a lot of guys uh, have the 750 or have upgraded to the 750. Like I know Squatch has a 750. The Scotsman has a 750. Um, and they're nice press, man. I, Dylan, the reason why I went with Dylan also was because of their warranty. I've heard um, they are backlogged on their production at Dylan. So it's like a... It might be a two weeks back order, not back order. They're backlog. So if you order one, or if you're thinking about ordering one, and you're gonna go through Dylan, their uh, manufacturer, um, just know that they have a like a wait list. Unless you find it somewhere else, like another um, site. Like I, I got my Dylan through eBay. It was a brand new press, but I got it from uh, it's an eBay store, uh, Reds Trading Post, I believe. So it's other, um, not manufacturers, it's other retailers that sell those presses. But uh, the six fifty, I like, I did it mainly for the volume, man. So, and um, at the price that I got this um, this Challenger press, I couldn't beat it, man. It was uh like thirty five bucks, which you can't even get one of these for 35 bucks. Uh, not right now because of everything that's going on. I think last time I checked this press, it's like 50 bucks. That Challenger press is a great press. They're like 80 bucks just for a press, but I seen on Brown Nails, they have a kit with this Challenger press. It's like a hundred and maybe 25, something like that, which, which that's a good deal. A lot of people don't like the box kits where it comes with the press. It comes with like the Lee um powder drop or a powder measure and that's for right now 
it will work because you're going to notice if you buy some of those kits, it's going to be some stuff that you won't use. And that's fine, but you can always uh, donate it or give it away to someone. Or, But it's always good to learn on. Some people like them. K24 said uh, he just casted about 150 nuggets. They are in the oven with powder coat. That's awesome. What caliber, brother? Kingpin says, get a press the good old-fashioned way. Steal it. <laughs> I paid $35 for that press. Actually, let me tell you what happened. I went to Academy. This was last year before everything went crazy. And I did. I put a video on my um, – it's on my channel somewhere. I think it's called Chico Wise was here. I went in the store, and the tag on, the, on this press said $35. And I knew it was wrong. I said, somebody messed up and I'm going to benefit. And um, so I, I looked for all of them in the store. They only had two of them. I pulled them all out, took a picture with my phone, with the price tag, zoomed in on it. And I took it to the scanner. And when I scanned it, it came up 80 bucks. As I knew the price was wrong. Talked to the associate. He was like, we got to give it to you for that price. I said, okay, I want both of them. You know, I already knew that's how it works. You know, it's like a false advertisement, so to speak. And it's not, it's not like I'm, uh, I'm being shady or nothing. It's their, their mix up on the, on the price, uh, price advertisement. So I just benefited. And one of those presses I donated in, in one of our giveaways. And I think, uh, lead bullet junkie, he won it. Yeah. I think for the Mike Train, I, uh, I might be wrong. Probably for the Mike Train giveaway we had on our Georgia Shooting Connection, uh, Lead Bullet Junkie won it. So uh, NYC Reloader, hey brother, <laughs> Kingpin, yes, yeah, they never pay full price. I used to try, never man. I, I, price on a lot of stuff is always negotiable, if you believe it or not. Um, that's one tidbit. I'll tell y'all a secret too about Home Depot. If y'all shop at Home Depot, Home Depot has a policy so to speak if you go there every associate it used to be like this every associate can discount up to fifty dollars per day so like if it, you go in their line say you're buying some tools or something like for instance like you guys know i'm a mechanic these are great tools even though i didn't buy it from home depot but home depot sells milwaukee stuff and um you can always ask for a discount. It's it's to the associate if they want to give it to you. And it's mainly, it might be like 10% or $10 or something like that. But I always, I don't always ask, but depending on how much money I'm spending, I will ask. Uh, one time I bought a Milwaukee saw kit and it was like 200 bucks. And just so happened, another retailer had it for like 50 bucks cheaper and they end up kind of like giving me the $50 off. So it was on a $200 kit. So, you know, you can't go in there buying some $50 and ask for $50 off. So, but yeah, uh, K24 said 105 grain, 38, uh, um, 358 size for nine millimeter. Yeah. That's another thing that I do when I, when I buy, um, molds, I try to buy a dual purpose, not a dual purpose, a dual caliber mold. So like I can buy a 358 bullet mold, and I can use it for 38, 357, or nine if I size it down. And if the bullet's not long, uh, if it's short enough, for instance, like this is a 38, 357, and this is a nine millimeter. All right. You see the difference. You will have a lot of trouble trying to stick this into a nine millimeter case because, oh, do I got a nine millimeter case? I should. I don't have none in, in my, um, oh, there we go. I got plenty of nine millimeter. Because this bullet is almost as long as a piece of nine millimeter brass. That's a nine millimeter case, and that's a 38, 357 bullet. So just picture that. Um, I've done it. But I haven't added any powder, so it's um I wanted to see if it it would cycle in my weapon, and I had to seed it too deep to do it. G twenty three says you can ask for anything doesn't mean you'll get it. That's true, yeah. And the worst thing they can tell you is nope, we won't give it to you. And you know, 
So let's see. It says G23 said Kingpin borrow it with the intent of not returning it. Sounds better than stealing it. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I mean, or well, that's what I try to do. I try to buy a mold that's gonna be, I can use it on a few calibers, different calibers. So 38 nine millimeter seems to be a popular one, and you probably could use it on 380 with highly unlikely. Those those bullets for 380 are like 105 grains all the way down to like 80 grains, some of them. So that's <laughs> yeah. K24 says 150 grain trickery to load for a CZ9. Yeah. I you know what I also had a um a full semi wad cutter. I'm sorry, a full wad cutter um that I tried to shove in a nine millimeter case and I did that with um with intentions to see if it would cycle and it wouldn't either you know but uh if you can find a bullet that's short kind of short in 38 you can probably use it for um nine millimeter so but I, I look I said 10 minutes and I'm all I'm at 21 that happens every time so but yeah that's what I'll do guys Probably do some casting and some smelting of some lead so I can get my separation. Um, so when I smelt, what I do, I try to separate my soft lead and my hard lead. So like my wheel weights, I do them in one batch. And then my soft weight, I mean my soft lead, like my stick on wheel weights, it's almost pure. You know, it's real soft. I can I can put a I can put a mark in it with my fingernail. So I do it separate so that when I mix for like hollow points, I can, uh, I know my consistency. Yeah. To, uh, K24 says he did the same thing for his, uh, 148 full wide cutter. It didn't, uh, nope. Didn't do it. Yeah. It was hard to cycle on mine. Um, it actually locked up the gun, but it was, it was, I was just trying something out. I kind of get bored and see, try to push the limits on certain stuff within the safety aspect though i always do that stuff with no powder i would i would never load anything like that and and put powder and a live primer in it because uh i won't shoot it unless you just had like a blank barrel that's that's what like um a lot of the designers uh, r d people do when they're doing i guess their sammy uh spec models and stuff like that so but sorry guys i wasted 23 minutes of your time that you will never ever ever get back shout out to mr host to rest his soul but i'll catch you guys later thanks for joining everyone nyc reloader k24 g23 kingpin he says out there who else was out there and mck he had to run off so I appreciate and squatch. So I'll see you guys later. Hope everyone has a good weekend, staying safe and uh, continuing being the great people that y'all are. Peace, man.